It's spoiler in time, folks. This is where we take all that hard work we do on Cord Killers, figuring out all the streaming services and the devices and everything. And then we sit down and we watch some stuff and we talk about it here, spoilery style. This week, we're going to spoil Hannibal Season 2, Episode 1, kicking off Season 2, uh, WandaVision, The End, Season 1, Episode 9, The Finale, and Raised by Wolves, Somewhere in the Middle, Season 1, Episodes 3 and 4. I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. Hey, uh, and we're joined by uh, Grant Davis. Uh, Grant Davis, what's your favorite thing to associate yourself with? Uh... Anxiety. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> of the Anxiety Podcast, <laughs> aka no, the MCU, MCU Pod. Pod. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yes, MCU Pod. We talk uh, all about um, WandaVision and Winter Soldier and Falcon. I should know the name of that show properly. What if all the expanding, ever expanding MCU? This is a rare case where our guest has seen everything that we've seen, and I have no idea where we should begin. Tom. Lead us in. Uh, well, uh, let's start with Raised by Wolves, uh, episodes three and four, uh, where we, we kind of settled down from the first couple episodes. Uh, this is Virtual Faith and Nature's Course, uh, where they kind of run together because I watched them back to back. Uh, the kids are not trusting, uh, particularly Mother, uh, and, and at one point, uh, they, they take off Campion leads them off, uh, to run away and try to get to the Mithraic people. The Mithraic people are some of them anyway, survived the crash. So we get some more flashback, but also, uh, we get the story of how they decide to leave the crash and rescue the children, but along the way run into a square monolith like thing a la 2001, except it's warm and it's really cold on this planet. So that comes in handy. Yeah. Well, well I, I, I believe it's like a five sided, uh, a, a D five from a, yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 um, at this point, I'm certain that eventually they will make it clear, but I don't think they've outright stated that, the leader is the one that that raped the sleeping girl. Uh, like, like, like we just assume they have not that, said who the person the is. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. They they said it was a cleric, uh, and so we just assume. But, um, man, uh, the second episode was so much better than the first one. Like, uh, uh, uh the whole idea of of. I wish I knew the names of the characters. Uh, give me the name of the guy from uh, the, the guy that looks like uh, he's from Sons of Anarchy. Mullet. Who, Just name him Mullet. Mullet. Uh, okay. Marcus. Mullet and Mrs. Mullet, right? So so there's Mullet and Mrs. So. Mullet. Um, uh, 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 what I love about their dilemma is they 100% entered this environment under false pre pretenses. Uh, and yet they clearly have fallen in love with their offspring or their alleged offspring. And um, you can see them doing the massaging to, to actually like, like half the time they're saying the words that they know they're supposed to say being religious or whatever, but, but, but you can tell they're feeling it a little bit more than they think they should. Am I, am I the only one who read it that way? I felt like they're manipulating the system. They, they, they recognize the game they have to play. And I don't know. I, I don't know if they're kind of buying into the, the theology, the, the dogma that's going on there necessarily so much as it, it feels like they now see the, the, the power structure and, and Marcus is driving a wedge in there and establishing himself as the leader of these people because he knows how to play the game and to play on their fears. Well, yeah, I, I'll split the difference between you a little bit because, uh, yes, I think Marcus is exploiting a vulnerability here and he, he almost succeeds in taking over the entire group uh, and, and just falls a little bit short uh, because blame can be deflected onto the android. But... I also think not maybe so much that they're starting to believe the religion yet, but that they are liking the community in a way that they didn't expect. And I think that starts with them having feelings for Paul, having protective feelings, especially because uh, Sue didn't want to like 
Paul. She didn't want to have a kid. And now she finds mm-hmm. that she feels protective. I think that's starting to grow into wanting to be in control of this group and this community. Yeah. Uh, that's a pretty good way to put it in that, like, whether they want it or not, they definitely truly seem to be feeling mm-hmm. things for Paul. Right. And they, there seems to be a bunch of knee jerk sort of, uh, on, uh, automatic responses where it's like, well, we can't do that because as Saul says, we should always blah, 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 where it's like, then they say it and it's not like they recoil from it. They're all like, huh, I just said the thing that they would expect me to say in this moment because I actually care about the kid or whatever. Um, uh, I don't know. Like uh, part of me thinks that they're going to find themselves increasingly trapped as they usurp the authority and become in charge of this group. And as they do, the most convenient thing to do is to actually believe the things that you are saying, because it's hard to say a thing that you don't believe. And the leader knows that they're not who they say they are. So they're going to have to work extra hard to convince everyone else that he's lying when he plays that card. Are we, we're all caught up. We can go straight to the second of these two episodes where the leader is a little bit burst into flames. <laughs> That's why I, I'm, I'm skeptical of that guy being the, the rapist on the ship because he's dead. He got charred, right? <laughs> oh, so, so, so storytelling wise, it would be better to, for us to hold on to the possibility of an even bigger batter back bad guy. I, I, yeah, I, w- I would think there might be some other character that they would bring along that maybe endears themselves to us before we get that kind of twist reveal of, oh no, we hate this guy because we know what he actually did. No, that's a good point. The leader the leader does uh, become a, a crispy piece of toast <laughs> by the end. Uh, so we don't know that he told anyone their secret. So maybe there isn't so much pressure. So there's something fascinating though, Brian, about what you're saying. Um, about Marcus and uh, Lady Mullet, I believe is what you see. Right, right, uh, right. Mr. and Mrs. Sue. Mullet. Yeah. Yeah. That they love Paul because they've been in this, um, what do you call it? This artificial sim. dream state sim, sim where they've been able to uh, be with him and raise him for 13 years. But I would like to say, as a parent, that there's some BS to that idea that, uh, yeah, you, you got to raise a kid, but you had it on easy street. I mean, this is echoes of what goes on as well over in, in WandaVision of like, uh, you're a parent, but you're a parent who can, uh, check out and your, your, all your kids needs are kind of taken care of by a machine. Uh, I mean, you know, I guess you're looking out a little bit for their emotional well If anything, wouldn't that be better evidence of why you would fall in love with the kid (laughs) when you don't have to deal with any of the hard parts? (laughs) Well, and also they are not with the kid. The kid is with mother and father. They are trying to, now, they yeah. want to find the kid because mother took them in episode one. Where are we at with mother and father right now? Uh, uh, so, so, so we know that mother is um, uh, uh, some kind of special, uh, what did they say? A necromancer or necromancer, something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, mm-hmm. But um, there was something in the last couple of episodes that tickled at the idea that it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world for father to also have a similar secret. Like, seems like it would be awfully weird for just mother to have a unique ability and father to have nothing. Uh, Although at this point of the story, that's how they're representing everything. I mean, I'm not discounting that that would be fun if we did find something with father, but I'd be perfectly satisfied if it's like, oh yeah, no, he was what it, appeared to be like he was what it says on the tin just just a a colonization bot and that's it and and then the mystery becomes why did she get shuffled in there you know if they had one if they they didn't have two of of that kind of bot uh but i wouldn't i wouldn't be shocked if you're right if we find out like oh wait they didn't have any bots that were like that they just had to reprogram whatever was laying around and father happened to be this other thing am am i the only one who found myself like really kind of cheering for the hard parenting that father was doing when he said, here's a pokey stick. You need protein. You're going to have to poke and poke again until this thing stops moving. And then 
and and facing the fact that that thing seems to have an awfully humanoid looking face and in and, and, and it makes me uncomfortable and of course eventually it becomes revealed that that you know this is a pregnant being of some variety mm-hmm. but 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 like i I don't know. Like I was weirdly proud of father doing the hard fathering that he had to do in that moment. Was I alone in that? No, absolutely. I I was feeling that moment where he's, he's taking it on upon himself to teach a very tough lesson to them that you're going to have to survive without us. And everything else on this planet seems to be poison for, for you. It's brutal that you'll have to, to kill another living being to survive. But if that's what you have to do, that's what humans have been doing for thousands of years. Yeah. Bad news. Uh, herbivores off the menu. You're going to have to be a carnivore. Start here. Yeah. And and he does the patient bit with Campion where he's like, all right, fine. You know, like collect all the, the plants. We'll try them out. And they get real close with one of them. And it's like, yep, it's just uh, going to poison you. So sorry. You're going to have to eat the meat. That's all you got, uh, especially because they find out that the it's like potatoes. They're not potatoes, but they're potato like things have radiation in them. And that was what was killing the children, not mm-hmm. Campion. We don't know why, uh, but it would make all the others sick as well. And they def- when they discovered that uh, they because they had the stolen transport, which they were trying to feed uh, the vegetables into, uh, they realized, oh, crap, we, we really can't eat anything else except meat yeah and i i i I think they they flatly stated that um he'd build up a resistance yeah to the radiation like 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 because he almost died but came out the other side it was Mm -hmm. because he uh, had a resistance to it um man I, i i i as far as parenting styles go it's fascinating to watch the slow motion experiment of what if you just told the truth to your kids at all times? And, you know, obviously in real life, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but certainly in this show, we get to see a simulation of what that would look like. Except for one, when one parent kills the other parent, then, then it's okay to lie about that, I guess. Yeah. I mean, up, up until they undo it and then make it better. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. like in a real oh, marriage. I did kill him, but. <laughs> if you're going to be able to undo murdering your spouse, you can lie about it until you've done so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, that the, the monster though, when you're talking about it being kind of humanoid, we saw that Paul found a little human doll out in the woods Oh, little right. stick figure thing and he didn't know what was going on with that as well as we have this kind of cloaked figure that like has this little kids whisper thing going around with them mm-hmm. that has been seen both by paul and by uh the father character so i don't know what's going on with that but maybe there was other attempts to colonize this a long time ago that resulted in like a splitting um variation with some are are these mutants kind of that have have digressed and others have like more highly evolved is potentially what's going on. I'm not sure. Or maybe there's some technology around because when Paul saw it, I was like, Oh, it's telepathy or he's just hallucinating. But then father saw it too. And I'm like, okay, so that's either a real thing or it's some kind of technology that makes them do it. But yeah, I'm starting to think that the, the holes uh, are more than than just serpent holes. There, there's something else going on there. Not, uh, not, not big sandworms. It's something else. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. I don't know. I'm starting to suspect. They have there's done some Dune vibes. A very good job of of giving us what feel like right now as concrete structures to hold on to, and yet every second that passes, I think. Eh, pretty much anything goes isn't it and yeah and and, and literally anything goes it's because there it's, was obviously something there or we wouldn't have the the hot hexagonal you know irregular pentazoid thing that all the mithraics are next to yeah no that was the and then we have the master. prophecy of the kid we don't like there i think there's a lot of really fascinating uh mystery going on in the narrative here that I would love so much more if tonally this wasn't so bleak 
it, the the visual palette the the music that goes along with this everything is just trying to bum me out as much as it can and it, it's it's succeeding in that regard. That's, uh, but but that's pretty good though uh the question of the prophecy because um we're, we're all trying to suss out the rules of this universe and um i honestly it's a coin flip whether or not does the prophecy equal like 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 whatever the prophecy says has to come true one way or the other or not um i mean so far we've seen everything align with it uh just it's it's a matter of interpretation right yeah like yeah we is saw it just pattern it recognition be, hmm. it could be campion that was the the chosen one or paul was thinking i is it the uh the oldest kid that was kidnapped that paul was thinking like the son of the clerics who had died so mm -hmm. he's an orphan as well. So I don't yeah. know. I or it's just a vague enough piece of uh liturgy that you know you can fit anything to it. I don't know. Maybe it's not that either. I I don't feel like they would do that to us. Like like they seem to have established that whether it makes sense or not, whatever prophecy there is seems to be legit and we can hold on to that and and that they're not going to jerk us around and 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 suddenly you know like whatever those are nonsense words don't worry about them like um i i, I feel like there's there's some meat behind those bones I, I i i don't know yeah only meat though no veggies yes so that stuff will poison you all right any other thoughts on raised by wolves it's good it's a really good show it's, it's really a really fun. good show it it has slowed down since the first couple of episodes, but I'm fine with that. Uh, to be honest, if anything, I'm thankful for a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, I I also do not have a problem with the pace giving me a chance to breathe. I, I enjoyed the the thrill ride of the first episode and a half or so, but it's good. It's good. Bryce, I know I know you're you're I'm walking. Up. I'm, tr I'm trying. To, I know you're trying real hard to be yeah. the shepherd, but, 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 but as the shepherd, is there anything you could say without fear of ruining anything for us? I would say after you guys watch this, this season, I think it would be very interesting for you to go back and listen to these episodes of spoiler in time, because mm. I'm hearing you mention some things and I'm thinking, how do they relate to other things that happen uh, in the show? And, and I think it's very, it's very interesting. The, the ways that you are being pulled pulled around in mm. ways that having seen it, having seen the season already, I am becoming more aware of. I'm I'm really enjoying rewatching rewatching this and going, oh, this is okay. Mm, uh, mm, uh, mm. Um, and I'm also still taken aback by how fast everything is happening. I I I could have swore that like the them finding the the um, the Pentagon diagram in the in the desert and and the um all, just all of the stuff that's going on with that i i swear i could have thought that was way later in the season but there is there's still a lot that has to happen this season and, right but uh, the most important great. thing is if there's ever to be a sympathetic character that i ever write in anything ever never ever ever allow him to be carried on a palanquin uh, <laughs> by a bunch of other people right like we're on the same page there that's no, the fastest never. way to say bad man. Oh, bad idea. I'm, I'm so yeah. excited to see what you guys oh, think. Oh, no, 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 don't. All right. <laughs> that is Raised by Wolves, episodes three and four of the only season of Raised by Wolves. Let's talk about WandaVision, episode nine, season one, probably the only season of WandaVision, the finale. Ryan, uh, I think you and I are fairly much on. I don't know. I might be a little softer on it. We'll see. Uh, I still love WandaVision after watching the finale. Um, Tom, there's no such thing as a bad episode of WandaVision. New subject. Grant, <laughs> what, what did you think of this episode of WandaVision? I, I would say it's, it was not the best episode of oh. the, the series. Okay, so you would agree that there's no such thing as a bad episode, but you might be on board that there has to be mathematically a least best episode of WandaVision. There, there are a lot of problems with how that show built up 
a lot of plot points only to seemingly drop them at the end. And there's not a second season to which, uh, to which they're going to pick this up. I mean, I guess we might see if they try to resolve some of the issues going on with, with Wanda's trauma in um, the next Dr. Strange movie. I'm not sure, but I, I found it pretty disappointing the direction that they went with Agatha, that she's just a mustache twirly villain instead of there being some kind of deeper goal or whatever her goal was. Is it just absorbing power? I don't know. That's all they kind of left us with. Uh, and Grant, yeah, I was just kind of bummed by stuff. Both Grant and Tom, let me propose okay. a hypothetical sideways reality. A in this multiverse of possibilities, imagine a show totally different show that starts off very, very good for about four episodes. And then every episode after that gets, we're not going to say worse. That would be awful to say. Let's Diminishing just returns. use the words less good. Each episode becomes less good after the next one. How would, how, how would you describe this hypothetical totally unrelated series. I, I don't know why we're dancing around this. We didn't like this episode. It wasn't as good. No, it sucked. Uh, it sucked. It, it, everything it, about it, this sucked at the end. It, everything for the last four episodes has <laughs> sucked. Started off very strong. Get it got out, worse Get and, it worse, out. and worse and worse and worse. It got very bad by the end. It's very bad by the end. Suddenly it's a, a blue, or, sorry, a red laser versus a purple laser and whose laser can absorb the other laser. Also, the kids matter except they totally don't also, why not have two copies of the same person have an ontological argument about the nature of whether or not being totally replaced by molecule by molecule makes you a different person? Fine, fine, fine. I'm done. All right, good. You feel better? No, I feel worse. Oh. I feel worse. <laughs> much Aww. like I felt like after I watched that last episode of WandaVision. I didn't feel that bad after after watching the episode. I just felt a little let down. I was like, oh, this is what happens. And Kevin Feige's brilliant. But this is what happens when you have to have a series connect to something. And that's what it felt like to me is those last two episodes particularly were like, OK, we all had fun with a great conceit and weaving a bunch of cool plot points and and things together. But now we have to get down to the business of connecting to Doctor Strange uh, and no more fun, kids. Uh, this is serious MCU business now. And I didn't think it was bad. I just didn't enjoy those two movies or those two movies, those two episodes nearly as much. No, I, I, I agree. And um occasionally as a steward of a good story it becomes important that you let the story suffer so that you can bring doctor strange into the wait he didn't even show up he did they didn't even do that part <laughs> what is going on why did we let the story mm. Supposedly, I, I think Paul Bettany came out and said, yeah, when I told everyone there would be a big cameo, I meant white vision. Uh, sorry. And I didn't. Yeah, want he to said talk. I couldn't wait to, uh, to work. He, they, previously, he had said it's somebody I've always wanted to work with. And it turned out he was just trolling because joking, that himself. person was himself. Yeah. I thought that what the eighth episode did was what I wanted to see and what they were kind of telegraphing that we were going to explore a lot of wanda's trauma we were going mm. to peel back the layers and see all these points throughout the 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 series of films where she has just been hit at, like punch after punch that like emotional blow and they're really diving into what effects that have and it also seemed like agatha you know for all of her like i'm gonna drag you through this it felt to me like what they were doing there was this was a fellow witch who was not going to be able to reach her as a friend and help pull her through this. So the only way she could do it was um, adversarially. I'm going to help you through your trauma by forcing you to confront these things. I'm going to do it coming across as a villain. But at the end, there's going to be the big twist that, hey, I'm actually trying to help you and we can mm -hmm. have an alliance and then we can do evil stuff. And that maybe that's where the conflict comes in. But instead it was, 
Uh, I just need to find out where your chaos magic comes from, and I still want it. I I can't believe that's the direction that they went. Not only that, but that there was such an exploration of of mental health and trauma and why that is important, only for them to basically drop it, like say, oh, that is something to consider, but we're not going to help with Wanda here. We're just yeah. going to make her pack up her bags and have to go deal with her sadness in a cabin somewhere else. I there There was a lot of... Or was it right? It's like that was her trauma to unpack. Or was it? We'll find out in a movie. There was a lot of things that should have been resolved in this finale that were they couldn't. I, f I felt like they couldn't because they're like, oh no, but we need to save that for Spider Man. We need to save that for Doctor Strange. We need to save that for the Eternals. And they, I, I, I could be wrong, but it felt like they hogtied themselves into having no no real resolutions in that finale. I watched it twice just to make sure I wasn't going to be factually wrong when I describe my understanding of what happened to you guys. Um, it seemed like uh, white vision and regular vision, both of which are false copies of original vision have a, a philosophical argument. Um, and then, and then basically we get to a place where, uh, uh, Scarlet Witch, uh, who we can finally call that, uh, Wanda collapses this, this pocket reality that she's created. Um, and as a result, uh, there's sort of a, well, see you in the next life, I guess. And then off all the visions go off. The children go off. Everyone goes, uh, Hey, Agatha, you're now just a, 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 a dumb, normal person. Gotcha. The end. Like, is that, is that, is that really how all this ended? I think white vision is still alive, right? Yeah. Uh, white white vision out of the bubble. White vision has, uh, something from the vision that was in New Jersey in him, but we didn't get to see what it was because they're saving that for some other time. Right. Yeah. That, but Tom, he touched to him that. on the head and that was very well, and well he, yeah, he, that's what he I mean. Like, he touched it on the head, go and, a little bit yellow for a second, and I and I wanted to see what the result of that yeah. was. Which I, I think the result of it is going to be eventually that you know the vision that Wanda created will integrate, blah 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 blah. But we didn't get to see that. Uh, well, you know. they, we saw that he has the shared memories, right? Like all the memories sure. seem to flash into the new one. So like he now has. It's basically like, oh, you're, we're picking up from where everything left off when uh, Thanos ripped that uh, the stone out. But now you have no emotional connection. And so right. he's like, I remember that life, but I don't have the, the same kind of relationship to it. And so everyone's going to a cabin to find themselves, I guess. Also, we didn't get to see Monica really Rambo. come into her own. Like, we don't know who she really has become. She's just a human shield. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and we don't know what happens to the kids. Are they just gone? Is that it? No more kids or. Well, the kids yell out like when she's she's in the astral plane, presumably at the very right. end. Um, yeah, that's she's, right. She's she, operating around the them. cabin. Yeah, but then she's also floating in the air in the astral plane. We hear the kids, which what must mean. I mean, they're obviously a manifestation of herself anyway. Right. Yeah. She conjured up these kids. She had about two weeks of of a life with them in, in this bubble and then had to reabsorb the essence of what they are and if they are some tangible things she was able to manifest at that point if she has a little bit more of an understanding of the dark cult i guess maybe she could bring them back later if they want well and you know with those those two characters specific, like uh, to beat the comic books guy now like those <laughs> those two kids do like get birthed and their souls go into real kids but not to like not even blood uh children to to scarlet witch right in the comic books they just kind of inhabit newborn twins or something uh, so, something like that and that's a fine story and a good setup for young avengers or these two young avengers characters but that's not that's none of this that's not text here that's not a part of this show uh mm. they're just a ah man yeah, you can hear our voices Ooh. Um, it's, it's very frust It's a, it's a very frustrating part of MCU when they have to, they have to spend X amount of time making stuff connect and making stuff open-ended, especially on a show that they have positioned as a mystery show, right? Like I, I don't necessarily, which am, I'm or, not necessarily or the majority of the experience was a genuine mystery, you know, like, 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 I, I, I don't think it's a, 
any kind of exaggeration to say like like who's the best character in this whole series i mean it's clearly agatha right uh uh, uh except for the last two episodes in which case it's, it's she woo. becomes a very very boring uh, yeah yeah but but uh, it's it, it's tough i i don't think mysteries need to always close the loop completely for sure uh, but definitely what we didn't get here was like an open-ended, wow, I'm really going to ponder this and think about how this affects, how this mirrors real life or how mm. this works as a thought experiment. It's just we have to kind of leave stuff unresolved because we have movies and we have series coming up and we need to leave ourselves open to have these kids. It seems like the only thing that they really didn't want to leave as a possibility was was the Pietro stuff with Robert Boner uh ralph, <laughs> ralph ralph boner excuse me sorry mr boner um for whatever reason he was like not a create a new creative personality he was like someone that i, I guess also it's why it cast quicksilver from x-men if you're cheeky. just gonna have him be ralph from um, or at least Jersey. let everyone spend nine weeks thinking oh wow this is gonna be this is a whole thing we're gonna start rampantly getting all of our expectations up about the X-Men universe. I don't, I don't mind it as much as you might think, um, mainly because like it was a very effective press release. Like that was an extraordinary press release. Like we're doing, we're breaking rules in a way you've never seen before. Yeah, that was, that was fun. Whether or not, it, <laughs> but they, they explicitly even, counted even though, that out. Right. right. I mean, that, that's the thing. It's the like the fact, press releases. She, she, now, she waves no. her hand and says, well, whatever that was, that was all BS anyway, but it's like, right. but you got to play with that. I, I'm, I I'm love, picking up I, what you're putting down. But, mm. I love how Brian always finds the, the bright side based on the marketing angle of something. <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> to me. You're like, yeah, but it plays well to marketing. Yeah. yeah but it was great. Empty marketing that had no, no reality behind <laughs> uh, it. It's almost like they played us like they played us a fool i thought they it was, almost was convinced fine. me two plus two was five that's what they did then they revealed except then everyone kept saying oh six. the comic books they show is four <laughs> that's okay i've mentioned this before uh, and okay. i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say here i'm just gonna reiterate my issue is that they have a mystery and they completely based it on the comic book so from week one everyone has been saying all of the things that was going to happen. And I think that's very frustrating from a mystery positioning. Maybe, maybe when, when Spider-Man and Dr. Strange are out and I've watched them, I'll, I'll, I'll think of this differently. You know, maybe it will all pay off and it'll all be worth it. I found that but, like the front part of this, sh this episode, this show um, really did a great job of enriching some of the movies that came before it. Like it, yeah. it fleshed out who Wanda and vision are and made elements of age of Ultron a little bit better as a result, like going back and watching them, now I have this backstory to kind of fill in the gaps of 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 a movie that was trying to do a lot in a short amount of it's time. A bold take, man, to suggest um, <laughs> that maybe something about this series made the worst MCU movie slightly less terrible. That's uh, I didn't I say brought... Hulk two or Thor two. So yeah, okay. right. I don't know what you're talking about. There. Fair enough. Um, but I lost my train of thought. I don't know. I I, I think that it just kind of messed the bed there at the end <laughs> that's uh, what we're saying. I, I, I i didn't even want to and and by the way i'm i'm frustrated but not angry and and there's a difference between the two i'm frustrated because i feel like there was more they could have given us and i have enough trust in the mcu to not um uh, uh, to not be a baby about this but um i was very surprised for all the chit chat that there was about Mephisto, that there was nothing Mephisto related. Right. That was what I wanted to ask you guys. Um, do you think that they changed what the finale was at the end? They rewrote it because it mm. felt like they were going in some other other trajectory. And then with it COVID felt like they were kind there, of there affecting were their reach. There, there were two directions to go. Like, like, like as, as a fan of the comic books, I only saw Mephisto in, in two places, either occasionally on a, a, a Spider-Man side, but mostly on a Fantastic Four side. And given the fact that they even said the, I know an astrophysicist, blah, 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 or whatever, um, it's fine that they didn't pick that up. But, but man, I, I, I'm with you, Grant. I, I, I felt like, uh, what was the point of any of that? Right. I, I, I think, I think, I think I you're right. Oh. I think, I think they, I think they had a different ending in mind when there was a different schedule. I was reading 
a little bit of an interview with Matt Shackman. I didn't finish it, but I, I saw him talking a little bit about, he was the guy who directed all this. Um, he was talking about uh, Senior Scratch, the bunny. There was supposed to be some part of the final story or potentially even expanding into 10 episodes to resolve all this where Monica ends up getting into a battle with uh, Fietro and Senior Scratch, who was supposed to be revealed to be a demon. And Senior Scratch is Mr. Scratch, which is a nickname for the, the devil. devil or yeah. Mephisto. So, like, mm -hmm. there could have been that sort of tie in right there, but they ended up dropping that entire plot line. So, I, I who knows? That they did talk a, a while ago, I think b before it came out, that uh, because of, of the COVID lockdowns, they kind of ended up making some changes to the story mid production. I wouldn't be surprised if that was a part of it. I mean, we saw yep. a lot. I mean, they even made one of those many unnecessary after credit scenes. Uh, you know, uh, 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 Peter, or no, uh, B B Ralph Pietro. Boner, Pietro, yes, Boner, uh, uh, hitting Monica upside the head as she was about to go into the basement. And that all ultimately ended up with she was in his basement for like a few minutes. and <laughs> So that she, she could show that his name was Ralph. Yeah, and and that seems like a lot that, of that, that he was Agatha's out Ralph specifically. Yeah, yeah, and, and that that just feels like something where like that that thread feels shorter than it ought to have been, and maybe it was just a cutting room decision based on their ability to to produce the show at that point. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, In the end, it's... I enjoyed Wandavision. Yes, I, <laughs> these last two episodes did not ruin wandavision uh and 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 i'm glad i watched I had, a, I had a lot of fun watching it this last this is the first wandavisions that i didn't watch twice yeah i i did watch it twice and i regret it i should have only watched it once <laughs> it, it felt for me like the return to water cooler television a bit um, yeah something that we haven't really had or at least i haven't really experienced since game of thrones finished where everyone is talking each week about a show because it, it hits such a good cross section of the the avid geeks as well as just general audiences that love every, anything MCU. So it's a lot of fun in that regard. And and for that aspect, I'm I'm pretty excited about uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, even though I don't know what it's gonna be. I would say this this show is head and shoulders above anything. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Runaways or even the Netflix shows. I thought this was better than Daredevil. So Correct. I, I, I will give a tip of the hat to that moment where between the lines, Vision essentially says, yeah, I die a lot. You and I keep seeming to connect again. See you next time. It's me, <laughs> the guy who dies and somehow meets you again. And 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 I should hate that, but I didn't. I don't know. I thought it was all right. That is WandaVision, season one, episode nine. Probably the last WandaVision ever. All right, let's talk about Hannibal, uh, the season premiere of season two, episode one, uh, which uh, we are now into the Japanese part of the menu, Kaisuke. Uh, this is sort of a reversal where, uh, Jack, or I'm sorry, uh, um, oh, I can't remember Jack Will. Crawford? Will oh. is in, is in jail and Hannibal Lecter is the consultant sent to consult with him on a case by the end of this episode anyway. So bold and I think very smart move to open with a straight up. Like, this is not a fantasy. This is not an imaginary situation. This is not a dream sequence. Straight up, we're watching Jack Crawford uh, do battle with Hannibal Lecter, and we're watching uh, Jack maybe die, although between you and me, I think he's going to survive. Uh, but then, to give us those words 12 weeks earlier, so we have a yeah. deadline. It's very clear that we just saw the end of this season and uh and and everything along the way uh I, I i i i i loved it i loved it i loved it i loved it not afraid to say i loved it i love that will now knows and is has no doubt and now nobody believes him about that 
Correct. And, and, and I, I he only becomes we, more and more convinced. Uh, there the, are 13 the more work episodes in this season. 12 weeks ago, uh, or 12 weeks from now, we'll see this fight, which means I think we'll probably get one more episode after the fight that shows what happens at the end to set us up for the next season. Uh, I'm with you, man. I, I, I kind of loved every single thing about this. Grant, are you are you aligned with us with with our viewing, or have you already seen all this? Uh, I've seen the entire thing, but I did go back and reread all through Wikipedia uh, for the first season, and then watch this episode, <laughs> so I could be like, okay, I, I kind of got my bearings again about where the story is at this point. Um, you guys, this is your first time seeing yes, the yep. show? yes. Uh, isn't it so just gorgeous? I I forgot it just how layers. It's so good. It, it's so considered in so many regards, but it's just beautiful design and it is unsettling and appetizing all at the same time. That that was such a savage brawl at the beginning. Um, just Crawford being this just massive brawler and Hannibal being a viper. It felt it felt almost like um the 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 viper in the mountain from Game of Thrones. This this brutal knockdown battle and i um i also what deeply, a great opening i deeply appreciated how long they let everything simmer because we coming into this moment have no idea of the context or where stuff is headed and they allow us to remain in that unsettled super position uh until finally it becomes clear like uh like 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 even hannibal is unwilling to admit like okay is he about to go for me or no? And then, and then, you know, eventually, you know, everything collapses and off they go. Um, I, the, the, uh, I, this is the first time we've seen a deadline for, for an arc of this show. They very clearly have told us this ends with this moment, this moment, meaning Jack figures out that Hannibal is a bad guy. We've always known that Hannibal is a bad guy. Finally, Jack figures it out. But also, Will, on the same episode, figures out that Hannibal is a bad guy. So now, all of a sudden, we have two guys that we're rooting for and one guy to root against. And this is the first time the show's given us permission to, to fully understand two good guys, one bad guy watch and Hannibal was the manipulator secretly in the background. Now will is also a manipulator. It's, it's, Hannibal, it's, it's the only power Han he has. He's trapped. Yeah, Hannibal's weakness is that he is too attracted to will's mind. Uh, he wants to be will's friend for whatever reason. And will's useful in helping Hannibal solve these cases, which will help Hannibal build credibility, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the exploit that will can and can can use to try to crack Hannibal through the bars. I'm and, and fascinated with that. Also, the FBI slash Jack Crawford is going to be unable to stop themselves from using the incredible tool that is Will Graham, much like in the uh, 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 silent silence of the lambs. Uh, uh, they were unable to stop themselves from using the tool of Hannibal Lecter. So, so it's like, we know that the institution will be unable to stop themselves. And that's the one power that Will Graham has to possibly worm his way into, uh, getting something done. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. I'm super excited. This, this show, I'm already sad that it's not continuing. I, I don't remember if the first season was making so many, uh, references to Silence of the Lambs, but it was going on a lot here. You know, you already mentioned mm -hmm. Will Graham, the the creepy just standing there in the daze in the cell. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of lot to be paralleled between the the serial killer of the week in this story, or I guess going to be two weeks here at least. Um, that they, they... And, and Buffalo Bill with like you know the capturing people, um, the interest in their skin and throwing them into the trunk or, you know, grabbing, capturing them in the car thing. And, and yet the killer plot is a little bit less intriguing than er the whole dynamic going on between, between Will and Jack and, uh, and Hannibal. Yeah. Bryce, where are you at? 
I think that this is a great episode. Uh, I think we have the the benefit of we can now watch these back to back. Um, and I don't. I was re- I was really glad about the intro um, for all the reasons that that we've talked about. But it also made me feel like, and this continued into the rest of the episode, that by the end of season one, they had realized that aesthetically they have a very striking show. And that they really, really leaned into it a lot more um, in this episode in terms of giving a lot of visual stimulus, right? It starts off with, with you know, that the, the shot of, of Hannibal cutting into the liver. There's um, a moment, there's the moment where Hannibal and Jack are, are, have, are dining together, I believe. And for... It's Chilton, I think, right? Oh, well, it's also, yeah, it's both of them. Yeah, where uh, he's pouring the wine and there's just a little shot, there's just a little beautiful top-down macro shot of of the champagne being poured and and i i can uh, not to mention we're seeing a lot more of both the antler demon to kind of represent hannibal but also the ghost version of the lady agent as um will is, is getting the the hypnotism uh with also the the inverse remember the inverse of the 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 pendulum right and instead of swinging from the top it's ticking from from the metronome and it's blue instead of orange um, I, I think the show is really leaning more into its its aesthetic differences, which is is I, cool. I, I also loved that there was kind of an eye rolling aspect to like um, that trope. Uh, we all know that hypnotism is is the totally bogus way to try to summon dead memories or whatever. Like 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 there was there was some amount of it of it crapping on its own conceit in that. Did moment. you feel? I I didn't feel that. Oh, oh well, um, I I do know that within within uh 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 in maybe this is through the lens of somebody who's obsessed with the satanic panic uh, I, 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 the hypnotism is the fastest way to manufacture false memories and so there's that moment that it's like well help me recover memories and then they do the thing and then there's this kind of eye rolling like oh my god recovered memories am i right uh <laughs> which which i totally dug well i uh they, I, and I do think they addressed that. I don't know. I feel like the way that they addressed it, maybe we're, we read that differently because I, I think, you know, at the, no point is them doing the hypnotism um, meant to uh, benefit Will's legal case at all, right? Right. Like but, but, you're not going to get any thing that a judge will care about out of hypnotism. Correct. But, correct. But, for, but he does Will. say, help me recover the memories or whatever. And then, yeah. and then there is an eye rolling moment when they discuss it later. Just a couple other notes too. Uh, Jillian Anderson's character uh, reveals a, a few more tidbits about the shared past and secrets uh, that she has with Hannibal. And uh, uh, Alana has put Jack into hot water. Uh, and the lady from Sex in the City uh, makes no bones about. I thought that Alana's, was her. I thought yeah, that Cynthia was her. Nixon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Cynthia Nixon. Uh, she, she's like, yeah, you, you sure you want to do this? Cause, cause man, this is not going to go well for Jack and Alana sticks to her guns, sticks to her principles. She, su- she has to say the truth. I'm surprised she did that. I think they, they made it. I don't know. I think they made a pretty compelling case of like, Hey, this is really going to hurt like everybody. And this is going to make us look bad. And Jack looked bad and they, it's going to put everyone through a lot of, they, I think they do a good job of trying to show the persuasive arm that goes into some of the organizations. Right. Like right. Where, where, where it's like, they stop short of saying, Hey, you're screwing it up for the rest of us, but instead, you know, couch it as, are you absolutely certain you don't want to recant your entire story because that'd be real great for everybody. <laughs> if you would do that. Because because it's misconduct. You're not saying misconduct, but we look right. at these things and all of these things say misconduct. We'd have and to now assume. this is bigger yeah. than yeah. I don't recall how intense this dynamic was in the first season, but ultimately this is a uh, kind of a love story between Hannibal and Will. And I there's this this just sexual chemistry between them. Mm-hmm. You already see it from Hannibal's side and it, it makes sense. It tracks with like how he was with Clarice as well. And, mm-hmm. um, in all those, those, uh, films that followed. But yeah. And, and, the, and, 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 um, uh, I a hundred percent agree. I, uh, I wish there was a, a different word than sexual, but I can't think of a better one, but, but oh, it's like, it's purely chemical. It's purely at a visceral, like, 
oh god like 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 i've had friendships like this where it's just like i don't know what it is i just love being around you i love you i love this whatever's going on infatuation i suppose but yeah. It's, yeah. it's a bit more obsessive than even just infatuation mm -hmm. like yeah, yeah. hannibal really but, but, identifies but, but it's and not disingenuous to... is the important part no, he, he, I also he really love Beverly him. Katz's <laughs> role. Beverly Katz is doing exactly what I hoped uh, when, when we talked last week, which is struggling with her perception of will and the realities that she knows is true from the evidence uh, to the point that she's she's the one that first goes to see will to be like, hey, man, just I don't really want to like you. Uh, I'm not even sure I do like you, but I do really need your help. So here, take a look at these. There is also something to, um, uh, and it's weird to go from WandaVision to this, like there's something about the superpowers that everybody has, where it's like uh, somebody shows up and very clearly Will's not there. It's like, hey, where are you? He's like, oh, I was off fishing. You know, like he might as well have been teleported off to the other place in that moment. Um, I kind of dig that those superpowers work two ways where it's like the bad guys uh they just magically are able to kill people and make art pieces out of them and then the good guys can you know just suddenly teleport themselves to other places yeah yeah disassociate right. yeah i i love the term um automatism here when i like watching this show with uh wandavision and um raised by wolves i was like looking for parallels between things and when they're talking about automatism here, the idea that like un unconscious crime, you, you can not necessarily be liable for that in the court of law. They can prove innocence. And that just remind me as well of what Wanda was going through and mm. the havoc she wreaks upon that city. And yet, you know, uh, how, how liable is she for something that's happening outside of her control? Uh, yeah. Minor spoiler. The enslavement of 2000 residents of a small town <laughs> for she, for her own puppetry uh, I, 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 but 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 she's not the and then she guy. never even fixed their gazebo she just like left agatha with them that's that's worse yeah <laughs> all right so there you go those are our thoughts on hannibal <laughs> season two <laughs> episode one uh grant Thank you so much. This was a pleasure to have you along for the entire spoiler in time. Let folks know where they can find what you're doing these days. Yeah, you can find me at uh, mcupod.com. That's where I'm talking about the MCU. I do one on Star Trek. It's startrekpod.co, I believe. And uh, every Monday I do a beer podcast called The Beerists. In fact, I'm about to start recording that in just a bit here. And uh, thebeerists.com. Excellent. Uh, you can find the MCU pod right next to Daily Tech News Show on your Acast app, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody, uh, for supporting us. Patreon.com slash Cord Killers. And next week, we will be spoiling the making of WandaVision. We're doing that in the off week between WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We'll be talking about Raised by Wolves episodes five and six and Hannibal season two, episode two. Until then, we'll spoil you soon. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>